surprise. I've accepted a transfer to Powell River. You've what? I have to be there at the beginning of February. All coherent thought fled as I gaped at the man who walked in the door one evening in October 1975, looking like my husband, but sounding exactly like a clone a father knows best. I'm not sure where it is, he continued calmly. Somewhere on Vancouver Island, I think. Staring at him in stunned disbelief, I felt an urgent need to sit my very pregnant self down on the nearest chair. We had talked, rather casually as I thought, about moving somewhere more appealing than this little rented house in the heart of Wally, a rather seedy area towards the north end of King George Highway in Surrey. It's true there had been a bomb scare aimed at the federal employment office where my husband worked, along with other threats of violence, and even the local elementary school was rumored to have a protection racket run by a pint-sized gang who routinely bullied the, the timid and vulnerable out of their lunches. Our own modest home had been ransacked in a brazen B&E one sunny afternoon while my infant daughter and I were out for groceries. But, but, leave the comfortingly familiar Dutch immigrant church community with my circle of close friends at its heart? Deprive the paternal grandparents of close contact with their only grandchildren? Care for an active three-year-old? Orchestrate Christmas? Have a baby? Pick up a house? Cut myself loose from all that was dear and familiar and head off for parts unknown like some latter-day Abram and Sarah? Really? Later, after I'd accepted the inevitability of the move and we'd figured out where Powell River was, we hammered out a deal of sorts. I agreed to move up the coast to this wilderness mill town for three years when our eldest would be ready to start school. This would give him time to get clear on his preferred career path so that he could then apply for a promotion to an area where we could both comfortably put down permanent roots. With our agreed on plan comfortably off in the future, preparations for the great migration began. So it was that on a cloudy day in late January, we set out for Horseshoe Bay, following closely behind the brave friends who were driving the decrepit budget rental truck filled with our worldly goods. Our sunny little daughter was snuggled among jackets, food, a cardboard box come bassinet, and her favorite stuffed animals in the back seat of our little orange Toyota Corolla. Having drained the dregs of the beer bottles left sitting around by the crew who had helped load the truck earlier that day, she slept the sleep of the righteously inebriated. I tried hard not to think of what we were leaving behind as I clutched our almost six-week-old son securely in my arms, blessing his sweetly contented nature. Instead, I relived my mother's three-week visit marveling yet again at what an amazingly efficient comfort and help she'd been in the tedious details involved in a big move. The novelty of riding the ferry from Horseshoe Bay was short-lived, lost in the pea soup fog that greeted us at Langdale. After his house hunting trip to Powell River two months before, my husband had raved in great excitement about the unbelievable beauty of the coast but on this day, we might just as well have been on the far side of the moon. There was simply nothing to be seen. In the increasingly dense fog, even the narrow, rough road, utterly unable to make up its mind as to what direction to take, was barely visible. We, we didn't drive so much as we crept, circled, wound, snaked our way along. Perhaps that thick fog was part of a divine plan to keep me blissfully oblivious to the fact that the road, with barely any shoulder to speak of, uncoiled itself along cliff faces, beside deep gullies, past ominous lakes and sheer drop-offs, with nary a sensible Ontario-style guardrail or cement barrier in sight. Our daughter, our daughter's tipsy state, as hor so horrifying just a few hours ago, was surely providential. She slept through it all, sparing herself and us the inevitable car sickness messes. The rental truck was not as cooperative. 
It died going up a particularly steep, curvaceous hill, and only our friend's skill in reverse gear rabbit jumping got it started again, though I trembled to think what was happening to our possessions so carefully stowed in the back. Even worse was the terrifying thought that some lunatic driver would come careening out of the fog around that 90-degree corner we just squeezed past, squashing us like bugs. Breathing huge sighs of relief, we finally limped into Earl's Cove. But that truck wasn't finished with us yet. We had to endure the humiliation of being towed off the ferry in Saltry Bay, where a kind gentleman offered to jumpstart the aging beast. Eventually, still shrouded in fog, now exacerbated by dark, thick darkness, we found ourselves crawling around more curves and up and down more hills until, finally, we reached our new home in the area of town known as Cranberry Lake. We remained enveloped in thick fog for the next week, but right from that very first day, we were also enveloped in kindness by complete strangers, many of whom were to become good friends. In the end, that made all the difference. We've been in Powell River for 45 years now, so obviously the three-year plan didn't materialize. I'll admit that though for me it took a long time, sometimes, like that crazy road twisting up the coast, a place just winds its way around your heart and before you know it, you're rooted and planted in spite of yourself. <laughs>